Welcome. My name is Harrison Kleiner. I'm an associate professor of philosophy here at Utah State um, at the Logan campus. I'm also an associate vice provost where my primary responsibility is overseeing general education and the assessment of general education. And you've tuned in to my virtual presentation because you want to learn something about gen ed assessment. And I'm here to talk about why we're doing it and what it is and, and, and what it's going to mean for you as an instructor in a general education class. Now, I know that anytime anybody brings up the word assessment, uh, it's something of a four letter word sometimes in department meetings and faculty meetings. And, and I think for good reasons. We've all unfortunately been asked at times over the years to engage in assessment activities that we don't find especially fruitful and useful. And sometimes we think of assessment as something that we just do to satisfy accreditors and things like this, but it's somewhat divorced from our actual work of trying to teach great classes and trying to build great programs. Um, and that's unfortunate that we've all had those experiences, but we've designed our general education assessment program to avoid all of that sort of busy work that sometimes gives assessment a bad name. I think it's worth reframing assessment a little bit. What is it and why do we do it? Assessment is just the reflective development of teaching and curriculum. It, it's, it's just the activity that we engage in when we're dedicated to continual improvement of our courses and of our programs. And here's something of kind of what it looks like, I think. And we all do this. You know, we start off by identifying some learning outcomes for our courses. You know, what is it that I want my students to know, understand, and be able to do when they complete my intro to philosophy class? And then we design our courses with those goals in mind, teach the course. Of course, we end up asking students to do some stuff, and we evaluate their performance on those things. And then at the end of the semester, you know, what, what do all responsible teachers do? They reflect on what happened and think about how things went. And, and, they, and they try to use that to inform the whole process again. You know, do I have the right learning outcomes? Um, am I designing my course in the way that I need to design it in order to best achieve those kinds of learning outcomes? This cycle of reflective teaching is what I think actual assessment looks like, either with individual courses or with programs. <clears throat> and that's what we're doing with general education assessment. Again, we all do that in our classes uh, because we care about teaching and we can care about getting better every semester, making every class that I teach a little bit better than the one that I taught before. But we had not, until last year, done that in an intentional way with general education courses. And now we have started to do that. We've started this general education assessment program where we are trying in a really intentional way to look at the performance of our classes on the specific general education outcomes. But I want to emphasize that while this general education assessment plan does have something to do with accreditors, uh, it was you know, a, a slap on the wrist by the accreditors that got us motivated to, to finally do this. But it's a good thing for us to do. And, and our ultimate goal when we designed this plan as we're executing this plan is not a summative assessment for the sake of the accreditors. Our goal is formative. The, the almost singular purpose of the Gen Ed Assessment Plan is to try to help faculty do their best work so that our students can be successful. And this is a really important thing for us. Um, general education is a really valuable and important part of the university experience. And for most of our students, it is their first experience in college. When they start off as first year students, they, they tend to start off in a bunch of gen ed courses. And that means that all of us who teach gen ed, we're really on the front lines of the university's land grant mission. Uh, the land grant mission, if you go back and look at the language in the Morrill Act, it's, I think the line says that the purpose of a land grant institution is to provide liberal and practical education to the industrial classes. Now, we probably wouldn't put it that way anymore. But now, what, how do we phrase it? Well, the land-grant university is a university that provides access to liberal and practical education 
to people from all classes and all walks of life. And this is really a pretty revolutionary thing. I mean, for most of the history of higher education, the only people who had, had access to higher education were the elites. And Utah State is, was founded for the purpose of providing liberal and practical education for people of all walks of life from all across the state. And so as a gen ed instructor, you are really at the front lines of that. And I want to emphasize, too, the importance of a quality general education experience for our students, all of our students, but especially for students that are first gen, especially students who come from historically underrepresented populations in higher education, who very often come into higher ed without the same kind of social capital that um, others come in with. Their experience in their first year with your general education classes is a centrally important part of their success, of whether or not they stay, you know, whether or not they persist in their education to completion, which is, of course, their goal when they start. And it's also all our goal as educators is to try to support these students, give them a meaningful experience so that they can see themselves all the way through and, and hopefully enrich themselves along the way. So this formative emphasis on the gen ed assessment plan where it's, it's purpose built to try to help you do your best work so that students can be successful. It's just an incredibly important part of our university mission. <clears throat> okay, so a little bit of detail about our general education assessment plan. So there are multiple learning outcomes for each general education designation. I'm gonna show you an example of those in a moment. Um, but we've decided to only assess one outcome at a time. And in part, that's because there's a fair amount of literature that suggests that when you try to assess a whole big, gigantic program all at once, uh, you tend to just get lost in all the noise, and it's hard to make much progress. If you focus on one thing at a time, you're, you're more likely uh, to make progress on that thing. And, and secondly, I suspect that there's going to be some sort of cascading effect. If, when you go and look at the outcomes for your gen ed area courses, the different outcomes are not mutually exclusive and, and radically distinct from each other. They overlap and inform each other. And so as we improve on one, there's likely a cascading effect. So we are running on a four-year assessment cycle where we each gen ed area committee has picked one outcome to focus on for that four years. And the hope is that we get enough data in the first couple years to start to inform some professional development that then we could execute and implement and then still have enough time to see you know if it's moved the needle at all so that's the kind of broad plan now we gather three pieces of information the first and here's where you come in is the instructor's perspective on student learning and what that means for you is that every gen ed instructor needs to create two assignments in their gen ed classes, one that occurs early in the semester and one that occurs late in the semester. I'm purposely avoiding saying pre and post because sometimes those have um, more meanings than just that. But you know, essentially we want to capture where are they when they start your class or roughly when they start your class or perhaps when they start learning the outcome that's been selected and then where do they get to? And you will score those things uh, using a rubric in Canvas. Then we also get a student perspective on their learning uh, on the relevant general education outcome. And we do this by adding a question to the idea evaluation uh, for every general education class. And so if you're teaching a breadth physical sciences class, it'll have an additional question that asks, how much progress did you think you made, student? on this learning outcome that we're currently assessing. I hasten to note that, that the answers to those scores do not impact your idea scores. It's just kind of one of those additional questions that we just auto load in to every gen ed designation uh, class. Let me note, we're starting off by only evaluating the lower division breadth area courses. So BAI, BHU, BCA, BLS, BPS, BSS, uh, quantitative literacy and communicative literacy. So we get a student input. 
And then finally, we have an independent perspective on student learning. And the gen ed area committees are once a year collecting a random sample of student artifacts from a general edu uh, education designation area and doing second scoring to kind of get a sense of uh, what people are doing and, and, and how people are scoring and understanding the rubrics. All of that information is then used to try to inform professional development that we provide for faculty and will provide for faculty uh, to the purpose of continual improvement of our general education program and its courses. Uh, you know, we want to we identify the kinds of best practices and, and the best kinds of assignments to use for certain kinds of outcomes and help create a community of teacher um, you know, educators, learner educators, all of us, where we can share our ideas about what works well and what doesn't work well. Another upside for, for, for you as instructors is you can use this information for telling your own story about teaching effectiveness or excellence in your dossier when you go up for various kinds of promotion. So I've talked some about what this looks like for you. Uh, but really, the first stop for you is to go um, to this website. And it's somewhat buried on the EPC web page. And I'm working on a general education landing spot where all of this will be fewer clicks away for you. But I just pulled up the integrated life sciences. If you actually go to this page, you land here. And then you can see the criteria for each of the areas. And so we'll pick life sciences. And you'll see that life sciences has one, two, three, four, five, six learning outcomes. These are the learning outcomes that make your gen ed course a gen ed course. Your gen ed course is a gen ed course because it is promising to uh, um, help students develop proficiency in these learning outcomes. Uh, one of these is picked for each four-year assessment cycle. Then we'll go to the next one and the next one and the next one. So the first thing I'd encourage you to do is, especially if you've never done so, is to head to that page and find your relevant um, list of learning outcomes. That's really step number one. Uh, now, if you're teaching a gen ed course that you've taught for years, then I think the thing to do is to reflect on your course, looking at those outcomes and say, all right, where am I asking students to, to improve on that learning outcome? Where, where am I doing in my class to help students demonstrate and develop proficiency on that outcome? Right? That's, that would be a, a useful reflective practice for us every single year. If you're new to the rubric, and maybe you're new to teaching a general education course, you've never taught one before. Start with the rubric, right? And then think in terms of backwards design. What kind of assignments and class activities should I create uh, to help my students develop proficiency on these outcomes? And what will I ask them to do early on to get some measure of where they are, uh, where they are when they start my class? And what will I do later on in the semester to see where I've managed to get them how much, how much movement they've made. You know, have, have they learned what I hoped that they would learn? Now, another reason why this is a really valuable thing for us, uh, looking at these learning outcomes rubrics for our gen ed courses and really leading with them, is it helps make for a more positive general education teaching and learning experience. So I have been a sort of Sherpa gen ed instructor <laughs> Uh, ever since I came here in 2004. And so, and I teach philosophy, so I, I get plenty of complaints about why do I have to take this class. Complaints, I have come to realize, are a plea for meaning. When a student says, why do I have to do this, it's because no one's ever explained to them why it would be valuable to them, and the value is not perfectly obvious to them. And Maybe we think it should be obvious to them, but often it isn't. And I think it's, it's our job to help them see why our classes are valuable. You know, sometimes there's some dots to connect for how is it that taking a philosophy class 
if I'm an accounting major, is going to help me with what I want to do to be successful? How is it that, that taking a fine arts class is going to help me if I am want to be a molecular biologist? Helping them connect those dots to see the learning outcomes, the habits of mind that these courses are meant to develop in students can give them a why. It can give them some reason to value your course. And of course, it's more fun teaching when your students think your course is worth their time and worth their while. So one reason to really lead with the outcomes is, is to make explicit to students what would otherwise be implicit. And my suggestion is to name and frame early and often throughout the entire class. It sounds sort of silly, perhaps, but we shouldn't assume that our students know what they're doing while they're doing it. Sometimes we need to help them see what they're doing while they're doing it. Right, right now, you're cultivating this kind of intellectual skill, and that intellectual skill is going to be really useful to you in the workforce, as a citizen in the public square, in your personal life. And of course, if you go through and look if you look through all of the general education outcomes, not just the ones for the gen ed designation you have to teach, peruse around all of them. If we were really cultivating proficiency in all of those learning outcomes in our breadth and depth and, and uh, competency courses, the quantitative and communicative courses, we would be doing an enormous good for our students and future fellow citizens. Uh, because there's some really noble aspirations built into those general education outcomes. And I, I just want to encourage you to make those really explicit to your students. Don't let them remain implicit. Lead with them. Name them. Frame, your, frame them in your courses all throughout the term. Okay, so if we were in a live conversation, I'd take questions now. But uh, instead, I think there's going to be some sort of virtual hangout room where you can ask me questions during the ETE conference. Uh, but I'd also invite you to email me with any questions, comments, or concerns about this whole process. Um, I want to add, too, that I'm going to be sending everyone who's teaching a general education course this fall, I will be sending you an email. Um, and in that email, I will tell you which gen ed outcome is being assessed for your designation area for this year. And I will provide some uh, tips and some support and some explanation for what you need to do in Canvas uh, to build out these early and late assignments and how you link them up to the gen ed assessment rubric and how you go in and score on that rubric. We've tried to build this in a way that makes it really easy for faculty. Uh, there are ways to connect quizzes or even a subset of quiz questions that then auto scores out on the gen ed rubric. Or if you assign papers or something like this, uh, it's literally just a one click over in a rubric on the speed grader. So it's, 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 a, it's a pretty easy thing to do once you get it built. And even the getting built, I'm not particularly a technological whiz. And, um, I managed to build it out in my classes in just a handful of minutes. So expect an email from me if you are teaching a general education course this fall with some information so that you can be prepared. Um, this is an expectation of all general education classes. We are expected by our accreditors to do this in all of our general education courses. And we're expecting that everyone is participating in this because we think it's an important way of evaluating and improving the quality of the general education experience for our students. And so, you know, if you're teaching a gen ed class, you'll get an email and, and you're expected to, to play ball with us. And, and I think that you'll find it rewarding um, to, to take the chance to think a little more intentionally about course design and these learning outcomes, um, and then to see how your students do, and then to reflect on how might I tinker and refine in my classes to try to get even better proficiency developed in my students. So feel free to contact me via email if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. And I leave there the designation page where you can go find the learning outcome rubrics for each of the breadth area courses. So, Thank you for attending, and thank you for your time. I hope you have a great semester.